Hello, everyone. Well, a lot of women nowadays have started uh, feeling perimenopause and menopause in their mid 30s or late 30s, as opposed to being in their mid 40s. So that is, has been very disturbing. So that's what we want to bring this topic to you again um, for, on how Ayurveda can help with dealing with perimenopause and menopause. So we have um, Dr. Vani Murli. She is uh, UK, from UK. She is an accomplished, highly accomplished Ayurveda doctor who's done PhD in Panchkarma. I am Amita from Narishtak, a platform for natural and holistic therapies. I'd like to introduce all of you to Vaidya Vani Moodley. Welcome, um, Vaidya Vani. Thank you, Amita, and hello, everyone, and thank you for having me here today. Great. So let's um, get started. This is um, actually a very informal session that, that we are doing today. So what um, uh, happens um, to a woman's body in menopause and, and what's happening nowadays, you know, when, when the, the shift is happening like in mid thirties or something like that? Right, so, um, so menopause is actually a, a shift or a change in the amount of estrogen that a woman has in her system. And also because the endocrine system is the epicenter of a woman's health. So the, the endocrine system, uh, which is responsible for the hormones and the enzymes and it's the epicenter of our health. So when that sh when there's a slight shift in the balance of the endocrine system, it causes havoc in a woman's body. So uh, we'll go to, the, like you said, the Ayurveda perspective of menopause. We'll talk about the different doshas and how the menopause is manifested in each of these different doshas. But um, uh, it, it, it runs havoc. You know, women don't feel like they used to. There's... Uh, hot flushes and there's dryness in the body and there's many many symptoms and the reason why people are experiencing or uh, ladies are experiencing menopause earlier is because of the kind of lifestyle we have at the moment the kinds of processed foods we're eating there's no time for ourselves you know we don't make my time uh, where we just just contemplate and just meditate or just relax or just, you know, have make time once a week for a lovely self massage. We don't do that. So these doshas are completely off balance. And also the foods that we're eating, uh, you know, a lot of them are processed and even the cow's milk that we consume now, because cows are being fed hormones for them to be able to milk and to produce more milk. So consuming that milk subtly affects this balance in the endocrine system that, we, that women have at premenopause. So this is what's pushing menopause to uh, the earlier years. Yeah, I, and that's very disturbing, right? For a lot of younger women not to be able to um, start a family for that matter, or, or, you know, so many other problems happen. So, so let's move to the Ayurveda perspective of menopause after this. So um, uh, Ayurveda believes that it's, it's definitely this, this whole imbalance. And uh, if you, if, if your symptoms would be completely different because Ayurveda is very specific to the, each of the doshas. So we have Vata dosha. So if you're of, of Vata, of a Vata dosha where you, you have dry skin and you're very active, uh, you know, you, you, you stress very easily. So when you hit menopause, these symptoms for Vata specific people would be, you know, mood swings, a lot of dryness in the body, vaginal dryness, uh, osteoporosis sets in, uh, more anxiety. So it's, it's really quite intense, those symptoms that we have for Vata people. And then uh, with the Pitha people, you find that predominantly Pitha people are very, you know, very, uh, 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 very prone to anger and um, very career orientated and very headstrong people. And when many poor sets in and the, the symptoms for Pitha people, it's, it's actually worse. The anger gets worse because the slightest thing triggers that anger. And then you have more hot flushes because they already have the predominance of Pitha and the, the, the heat that's going to the system causes more anger. And you find a lot of them break out in the skin rashes and you know some of them have uh, high cholesterol and diabetes sets in all different kinds of diseases set in for Pitta. And with Kappa people, you find they're more lethargic. They tend to put on weight, much more weight than they did uh, pre-menopause or pre, uh, you know, so it's different for Vata, Pitta and Kappa. So this is how um, uh, it sets in uh, for the different doshas. Okay, so, um, uh, so let's uh, talk about um, 
exactly what the recommendations are. You talked a, a, a lot about this lifestyle, right? All of us are actually guilty of that lifestyle, you know? Um, so how, how do, what does Ayurveda recommend? So uh, I think uh, whether it's menopause or whether it's not menopause, ideally Ayurveda recommends a routine because the body loves a routine. You know, getting up at a set time, having your breakfast at a set time, uh, finding time to relax because you, like you're nourishing the body, you need to be nourishing the mind because that mind is going to help you uh, in times of every challenge in your life, including the stress and anxiety you experience during menopause, but we don't think about it. You know, we need to be nourishing that mind with uh, uh, the breathing, oxygenating the whole system, oxygenating the brain with your kind, different kinds of pranayamas. You need to be doing the right yoga asanas for circulation. You, do be, you need to be meditating, silent sitting. You need to be observing that on a regular basis because this nourishes, it keeps the mind at a slow pace. It's like It's almost like a tranquil lake that you're trying to achieve. Uh, you know, so it's very important to do all those and sleep at a set time. So that is what we recommend. And uh, if you're looking at menopause, uh, do you want, do, shall I go into some of the, you know, the foods and the kinds of- uh, Sure, please, yes. Before we get- Yeah, yeah, please go in detail. Yeah, please, right. please, so, go uh, ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, ideally for in menopause, so if it's a Vata person, you're looking at, uh, uh, you know, uh, because Vata time, because the day is broken up into Vata, Pitta and Kappa. So in the morning, it's predominantly Vata time. So you need to be trying to, you, you can meditate early in the morning to calm that mind because with Vata people, the anxiety and the stress is really, really uh, much more than Pitta and Kappa people. So you need to be calming that mind 6, 6, 30 in the morning, you know, sit down for silent sitting, listen to our music while your eyes are closed, because not all of us are, are fantastic meditators or, uh, you know, clued up on uh, meditation. So all you do is sit down, listen to some calming music and calm the mind. It'll, it'll, it's, it's really very helpful. And uh, also, you remember that with Vata people, the anxiety and the stress, it triggers a lot of adrenaline in the body. And this adrenaline it runs havoc because it, it affects the whole uh, cardiovascular system. You know, Vata people start getting palpitations. And uh, so it's, it's not good to trigger this adrenaline, extra adrenaline into the system because adrenaline is, you know, for the flight and fight response. So you're having that permanently in your body when you're permanently anxious and stressed during menopause. So we need to calm the system down completely. And then, um, you know, rather than dry foods, rather than a salad, for menopause, we suggest easily digestible food. So keep away from caffeine, keep away from raw food. And uh, rather than a salad, go for a soup. You know, rather than a, a fuzzy drink, go for a, a lime and lemon tea, which is fantastic. It cools the system down, it's nourishing. And there's a lovely uh, decoction that I use for my uh, menopausal patients, which works really, really well, and they love it. So it's just... Uh, half a teaspoon of fennel, half a teaspoon of coriander seeds, half a teaspoon of cumin, and uh, a bit of licorice in there. And mm -hmm. just boil everything together, and you can have it with some uh, fresh mint leaves. It's a delicious drink, and it helps all three doshas, and it helps you bring, it helps bring you back in balance. So uh, well, coming back to the, those are homemade remedies, but also shatavari is highly recommended for cooling the system down and helping with the, uh, you know, the, the uh, reproductive organs, especially vaginal dryness and things like that. But be very careful. You need to be taking shatavari under supervision of um, a practitioner because uh, shatavari can also, in kappa people, start causing a bit of lumps in the breast or it can also start causing acne because the minute you, you, you tip off the, the kappa element, then you're going to get, it's going to manifest as those different things. So you need to be very careful about shatavari. However, ashwagandha is, is amazing for stress, for improving the calcium uh, content in osteoporosis due to vata uh, predominance. So uh, uh, ashwagandha is fantastic as a stress buster and for improving the calcium and improving the health of your bones during menopause. Because remember that estrogen is also responsible for calcium absorption. And in menopause, your estrogen is going down, calcium absorption goes down. So that's why women are prone to delicate bones and you know breaking bones easily and uh, aches in the joints. And so ashwagandha would help with things like that. Another herb that we use is um, uh, licorice. It's a fantastic adaptogen. Uh, it's good for the nervous system. It's good for the adrenal, adrenal, adrenal glands. 
So it makes you sleep better. It's a phytoestrogen, so fantastic. Licorice is also very, very good. So I'd recommend also chamomile tea at night to calm you down. Uh, so, you know, all of those things are fantastic. So look at them and try and get them, you know, make sure you got them in your cupboard. But the only thing I'd say with shatavari, be very careful, you know, make sure that you know your dosha, or you've been to a practitioner and they can say, give you the go ahead to use shatavari. Because although it's widely advertised on every website, you know, for menopause, shatavari, but I've had quite a few experiences with patients that have taken shatavari. So just be very careful. Okay, so what about, and, and you, uh, what about other punch karma therapies? Since you have a PhD in punch karma, so we have to ask you this question on punch karma. Right. So uh, if you let's let's first talk about the massage, which is, you know, uh, Purva Karma before the Pancha Karma. So sure. uh, so uh, just uh, lovely massages. Just take time. It's 10 minutes of your day just to warm up oil. Like I said, Vata, sesame oil, Pitha, coconut oil, Kappa, people, olive oil, warm it up and just all over the body and then start working from, you know, the limbs and around the stomach that particular area and if you don't have time for the massage then just your feet and your head is good enough to relax you and to nourish and improve the circulation and um, so just the massage is very good and then moving on to pancha karma so when we have um, uh, you know the the hormones and this heat in the system and this imbalance so you're probably looking at I think all five of the therapies would be recommended and that's why it's important to go to a practitioner and they'll tailor make your pancha karma according to your dosha depending on like earlier what I said you know what vatha would experience what pitta would experience and what kappa would experience based on that we could put a pancha karma package together for you so ideally virechana is very important because virechana the heat and the, it's normally in from the solar plexus, which is the stomach, and you could expel it. You know, the uh, you have the shamana and the shodhana. So shodhana is the expelling of the the heat, the pitta. So uh, virechana would work very well. Enemas, you know, if you want to cool the system, we could use lovely decoctions that could work on just cooling and calming you down, calming the vata dosha. If you if you're suffering from anxiety because of menopause, then warm sesame oil with added uh, things like balash, uh, different kinds of uh, oils combined as an enema for vata people, different for pitha people. And uh, so uh, vrechana, and then, uh, you know, probably vamana for kappa people that tend to have a lot of uh, mucus being produced and the kappa element, you know, becomes quite deranged. So vamana therapy would be good for them. Uh, and then also you look at rakta mokshana. Like I said, the pitta people come up. I've had menopausal patients coming out in rashes that they've never had before. So, you know, after uh, virechana and basti, we look at rakta mokshana. And then uh, anuthailam, I'd, uh, the nasium, we use anuthailam. And I'd, I'd recommend that for vata, pitta and kappa people. Because the uh, nasium, the nasal therapy, is something that works on it's sarva mukha roga. So all diseases from the neck up and this would help as a, a stress buster you know it calms the nerves uh it, it opens up channels it's good for the eyes the dry eyes that uh, some menopausal patients are even pre-menopausal patients suffer from dry eyes because of the pitta that's quite furious within the body so uh and, and so all kinds of uh, uh, effects that of the menopause from the neck upwards the Anuthalem takes care of that. I've, I've been using it with a lot of patients and we've had fantastic effects. So yeah, so those five therapies for, um, like I said, depending on which are the more severe symptoms that you have before because of the menopause. So Nasya, you talked about Nasya and Anuthalem. Is that possible for people to do it at home or is it you, for that also you need to go to a practitioner and they will? No, no that, that is, it's an easy home therapy. I do it to myself, you know, every day. And it's, it's very easy, 10 minutes for yourself every night, just a quick steam, yes. a quick facial massage with some sesame oil, just to open up these channels and to improve the circulation. And then all you do is warm up the oil, mm -hmm. drop it into the nostril, five drops in each nostril, lie in that position with the, the head back so the oils tend to move. The minute it comes down into your throat, spit it out and do a quick gargle with some turmeric and salt water, quick gargle and you find uh, to go. It helps with insomnia that a lot of my patients um, in menopause are experiencing. So it 
it helps with insomnia because it, it, it calms down the nerves. The oils are so nourishing that they they help um, with the vata that's uh, you know going through these uh, the nerves and all of that. So it's very very relaxing. It helps with insomnia. It helps with stress. A fantastic therapy that I'd recommend for every anyone can do that at home. It's quite simple. Great, great. So we did talk about um, uh, herbs a little bit. You talked about sh shatavari and ashwagandha. Anything that you'd like to add um, as far as the diet and or anything else uh, to the herb section? Uh, so, you know, a, a lovely herb that, uh, that I'd recommend. So uh, I always tell patients in the evening, make sure it's a very nourishing soup. So I quite love, I quite recommend, always recommend the moong dal soup. You know, just uh, half a cup of moong dal in there, some turmeric, some ginger, black pepper, some fennel, uh, some bay leaves, uh, because bay leaves are fantastic. You know, they, they're, good, uh, they're, they're good for your uh, digestion, which becomes impaired during menopause because of the, the, the shift in, in, in the pitta and things like that. So we need more digesters. Uh, so things like black pepper, all of that, and just lovely hot soup. It's um, fantastic. In the evenings and uh, you know maybe a lovely hot drink the golden milk with turmeric and a bit of uh, um, uh, black pepper and some uh, ghee if you want at night it's a lovely drink um, also coriander is fantastic because it's very cooling it's very very cooling so um, uh, I had a patient who developed you know a lot of uh, not acne but a kind of a rash because of, of uh, menopause which she's never had ever had before. So even coriander crushed and applied on the skin to cool you down, it's really really good. Taken in a, or just a soup with plain coriander and some carrot, uh, it's lovely. So th those herbs I'd recommend. Also, um, Chandra Prabha Vati is is a uh, is, is a herb that we or tablet uh, formulation that we'd highly recommend for menopause because it's very cooling. As you know, Chandra Prabha, you know, the, the herbs in there are cut at, at full moon and they, they process it full because it has, the moon has a very calming effect on the system. So taking Chandra Prabha cools the system. So I'd recommend an aloe vera juice. We can't forget aloe vera. Amazing effects on cooling the system and amazing for as a hormonal precursor as well. Uh, aloe vera and also remember that we're trying uh, uh, if you the more you stress during menopause so the, the the nourishment that needs to go to be made to try and make the the the, the, the hormones are going towards trying to relieve the stress so you, you're depriving your body of uh, the hormonal or bringing the balance of hormones into the system if you stress so be careful not to stress but um, uh, like I said you know just uh, aloe vera is fantastic uh, it cools the system down, uh, it, it nourishes, it's, it's a hormonal uh, precursor. And also using the right oils is very important because your body needs certain kinds of oils to make hormones and to make the estrogen. So uh, uh, definitely not sunflower is, is contraindicated in menopause. So the oils we recommend are sesame oil, uh, coconut oil, uh, and uh, olive oil. You know, so this cooking. is for cooking, these oils that you talked about, sesame, coconut, and olive oil would be for massage or for cooking the food? Oh, oh cooking and for, for internal oleation by using it in your food and yes. external oleation. And that's the beauty wow. of these oils. You know, you could consume them and you could use them as a massage oil as well. So uh, because you need those, and also, you know, the omega-3, uh, all of that is very important in creating the right kinds of oils that are available in the system for manufacturing the estrogen that we lack during menopause. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. All right. So you, we t did talk about a little bit about the yoga, right? Um, so because and the yoga and stress are so correlated, so much research. So what are your thoughts on the yoga, different yoga therapies? So um, for, you know, I, because menopause, people, the, the women are so stressed. So it's don't ever go for a very strenuous, long yoga routine. I'd say if you can stick to Surya Namaskar, because it contains all the asanas, whether you are Vata, Pitta or Kapha, I say just go for Surya Namaskar. And I'd say, you know, uh, also the sit, sit in a long time in the lotus pose, because that is, you, you, you know, you're nourishing, you're keeping, there's more pressure on the, the pelvic area. And, uh, and that, that is what you want as well, you know. And also poses like the mountain pose or uh, Bhujangasana, all of that, you know, where you, you sort of stretching and bringing the circulation down towards the, uh, the, the pelvic area. 
the reproductive organs, that those kinds of poses. But I'd always recommend Surya Namaskar for uh, menopause. It's got all, it's like the nectar, nectar of yogic poses in there. And especially, it's almost like it's designed for menopausal patients because you have each of the asanas in that particular sequence that would really work for menopausal patients. Sure, and then the pranayama is there a particular type of uh, breathing techniques uh, that that women should do to cool themselves? Like, is it? Uh... Yes, yes. So uh, for Vata people, I'd highly recommend uh, you know just the Anulom Vilom, because you must know they already st they going through a lot of stress. There's the body's under a lot of dryness and coldness, so you don't want to aggravate any. So Anulom Vilom is best suited for Vata people who have the dryness already and the stress and the insomnia. Uh, Anulom Vilom is highly recommended for Pitta people with this, um, the hot flushes that are really, really bad where you, you know, perspiring at night and skin rashes and all those, uh, the shithali, you know, the shithali uh, breathing, that's highly recommended. And then for uh, the kappa people where you find that you, you're just putting on so much of weight at men during menopause, uh, very uh, lethargic. So there it's the uh, kapalabhati, which is a, a more uh, vigorous kind of breathing. So we would uh, recommend those particular types of pranayama for, for each of those particular doshas. And then you said the meditation, you know, a lot of people have problems sitting still. I mean, I do. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, the best thing uh, I'd say, um, Amita, is because Vata people have monkey minds. You know, <laughs> so active, you cannot yeah. keep your mind still. So uh, with Vata people, I'd say you, you need to do a guided meditation. And there's many guided meditation techniques available now, you know, just... Or you could even speak, just, just put some background music and, and speak, record yourself saying, right, close your eyes, think of a light, bring it into your forehead, let the light move down to your chest. Imagine a lovely lotus flower opening up in your chest and this light shines from the lotus flower to the rest of your body and then it goes expanded. So those kinds, you know, guided meditation, Vata people would probably uh, resort to the, the guided because uh, 30 seconds after sitting still, the Vata people are thinking of what they're going to cook for lunch or dinner and what they have, what's missing at work. And so it's really, really difficult. But the Pitha people are really, they, they're really good at meditation. They can sit for an hour and meditate. But um, I'm not sure, you know, menopause, sometimes it, 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 it kicks you off balance. But I'd say for all three, Vata, Pitha and Kapha, start with guided meditation. And when you feel you're on your feet, it's almost like, you know, like you've got this walking ring when children are trying to walk. You know, they, we have this little, put them in this little ring that helps them walk around. That's like the guided meditation. And when eventually when you feel your, your mind's more calm and you sort of tame the mind, then move on to just your own meditation, you know, where you, 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 you focusing on the soham, the breathing in and the breathing out. And it's a fantastic technique because when you're breathing in, imagine all the goodness you're breathing in, all the positive things. And when you're breathing out, just take out all the negativity. So this is a fantastic uh, form of meditation, the soham meditation, the breathing in and the breathing out. So I'd recommend those for, for, for you know, menopausal uh, patients. All right, so this was our quick session today to help all the women out there. If you have any questions, um, I know people are in Zoom, let us know. We can take the questions right now. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, this was just supposed to be a small tidbit of um, what you can do at home. But like um, Dr. Wani mentioned earlier, that, you know, if you need to take any medication, any herbs, shatavri or anything, you should seek a Ayurveda practitioner. Um, anything else you'd like to add, uh, uh, Dr. Wani, today? Uh, so also, I, uh, you know, because uh, the current situation with COVID and, you know, people being in lockdown is just adding to the mental uh, trauma at the moment. So uh, all I can say, you know, please try and focus on your silent sitting meditation because you need to be doing this inward journey. You know, don't try not to focus on the out, outer world and the outside and what's happening because at the end of the day, you need to be doing this inward journey, finding yourself. You need to be nourishing your mind, like I said, nourishing your body and really take care of yourself. That's, that's really important at the moment. So what would be the takeaway would be for women um, 
to have some kind of a routine. You talked yeah. about the routine part, like the Ayurveda talks about the dinacharya or the daily routine. Yeah. So, so that's what you would emphasize. On yes, that? definitely. I'd say that the main takeaway message, like I mentioned at the beginning, and I mentioned it in the end, have a routine because when we are prone to these hormonal imbalances. All your body wants and all Ayurveda recommends is a routine, eating nourishing foods at the right time, you know, according to the season, having your right foot according to the right season, eating at the right time, your breakfast, start off with some silent sitting or meditation, a bit of yoga, uh, go into, uh, you know, a good nourishing breakfast. Uh, and, and you know, live in the moment, be conscious when you're eating, don't have the TV on and things like that, you know, make sure you are, you are living every moment and enjoying everything. So your breakfast on time, your lunch on time, your dinner on time, and make sure you're sleeping at, 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 at the same time. Try and sleep at the same time every day. Bring this balance, bring this routine back into your life and you, you reap all the benefits I can show you. And then the other things you mentioned about the anuthalam using nasya, sort of like putting the oil, massages, uh, yes. Body massages, self body massages, nasya, right? Nasya, right. And then, you know, the, the pranayama. So uh, I cannot emphasize more on the benefits of nasya. You know, it's absolutely phenomenal for women. It, it just does something phenomenal to our brains and the way we think and the, the stress. And it's, uh, it just opens up these channels and you can read about the benefits. So I'd highly recommend nasya and self massage. Like I said, at least twice, start off with once a week and then at least twice a week because you want to improve the circulation. You want to get the blood moving. You want to get some hormones moving. And if you're stagnant, you're not going to experience any of that. So like I said, routine, self-massage, uh, anuthailam at night, if you can, or in the morning, doesn't matter, but make sure it's before a meal or if you do it at night, at least an hour after your dinner. Uh, Nasim and yoga and meditation is an absolute must. Okay. And then some other herbs you mentioned, like licorice with fennel. I mean, those are just simple things to, that yes. people can do at home. Women can do at home. It's so the, yeah, just the three detoxification, uh, you know, those that detoxify really well are the fennel, the cumin, and the coriander seeds together with a bit of um, uh, licorice. Black pepper or licorice in there. Licorice is fantastic. during okay. it's, it's a phytoestrogen, so it'll start allowing the body to create more estrogen so work on a bit of on that de decoction it's a delicious drink work on that aloe vera before your meals all of that helps in cooling you know and ashwagandha for your bones so i'd say licorice aloe vera ashwagandha chamomile tea at night to help with insomnia and uh, you you're ready to go in and <laughs> combat this menopausal symptoms <laughs> That's amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Mani, for being with us. Um, I hope UK lifts your lockdown, you know, in the sense, I think you're still in lockdown right now. Yes, Are yes, you? Uh, very much still in lockdown. Oh, my God. But, <laughs> well, uh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. To be honest, you know, we're, the, we're doing the online consultation, so it doesn't really uh, affect me much. It's just, you know, we're not, we're not able to do the um, the pulse reading with patients at the moment, but we're using the, um, the facial analysis, tongue analysis at the moment, which is working quite well. So, um, yeah, but we, we're hoping that soon we're out of this lockdown. Yeah, so to all the women out there, you know, uh, just, just to learn some simple tips and tricks. Ayurveda natural therapies have a lot of things to offer and, and slow down and, 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 you know, pause, right? Pause, pause a bit. But that doesn't mean that your life has paused because you're entering the menopause, right? So pause yourself, but don't pause your life. That's what I want to leave you with. With that, um, I'd like to thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wani, for being with us. Um, you know, I really appreciate all these tips. To all the women, to all the people who are listening to our sessions, please help us share these sessions. We are bringing every single day educational sessions on um, FB Live, as well as Insta. Go and follow us on Insta because we are doing more sessions on Insta right now. All right, anything else you'd like to add before I wrap up, Dr. Mani? Uh, no, I think you said it all. You know, uh, uh, take care of yourself because no one else will. You need to look after yourself because we, we, we it's, it's a pivotal role that we have in the family, you know, as, as a woman. So you need to really nourish yourself and look after yourself. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, and um, take care. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye.